Welcome to section 6, Extending Beyond the Map. Previously, we have gone over many methods of map making and geospatial data analysis. In this section, we will extend beyond our subjects and introduce you to modern cartographic products and map making methods. We will then introduce you to different data types and color choices, where to find spatial data, and further resources pertaining to your geospatial projects. This is video one, Modern Cartographic Products. We will go over a list of maps that present geospatial data in diverse ways and critique each of them and discuss about their advantages. This is a coral path map. It is similar to what we've done for the Vancouver census data. It's divided by geopolitical regions or units and colored by a continuous value. As seen in this picture, the color scale represents restaurant concentration of a French region. An isoline map might be useful for if you're traveling to a mountainous area and it shows altitude of a fixed region. It could also be used in meteorological context. And this one shows the pressure of a given atmospheric layer. Each contour represents a fixed value of the measurement. For example, it could be an atmospheric pressure. And as you move within the contours, it usually shows higher or lower values. This is created by the METR package that focuses on climatological topics and using R to represent the data. A cartogram is a map in which the geometry of regions is distorted in order to convey the information of a variable, in this case, the population of Africa. The image from the left shows the proper area of different countries in Africa, while the one on the right distorts based on the population count for each country. It is a good way to show inflated or exaggerated values when there is disproportional data as represented by each region. A movement map shows the density of movement and the flow between locations. This is good for airline traffic or bird migration and topics like those. Instead of showing magnitude by color, as seen in a choropleth map, a bubble map using different sides of the bubbles to represent a numeric value, in this case population. And of course, it is also color-coded, which is not necessary for a bubble map, but it shows different dimensions of information in this case. This hexagon map of the United States shows marriage rates. Each state is represented by a hexagon, and the color represents the number of weddings per 1,000 people. By dividing the states into hexagon, it is not proportionally representing the area of each state. Similarly. A dotted grid map uses a network of grids to represent an area. It uses different dot sizes to show magnitude instead of color, similar to a dot map. It provides a more appealing idea of the magnitude of the value being represented. In this case, it is the count of different types of animals in Europe, and it challenges the traditional notion of showing values by colors. This is the map that we will try to create in the next video. All of the maps that I provided in this video can be found in the following links with codes associated. You can feel free to replicate any of these examples and practice with map making.